Got another one for you again. This time it's a Siemens branded television. There it is, Siemens. Uh, I think it's the one on the same, the big electronics company. Turned out a few TVs in its time. This is, uh, so it's a German brand of TV. It's, it's quite uncommon in Australia. This model is the FS247. The tube is a 4-3 aspect ratio tube. Its size is 76 centimeters. It's not a flat screen, it's got some curvature to it. The brand of the tube is Toshiba. Uh, it's, it's got a really good picture. I don't mind the Toshiba tubes. The German companies used Philips quite a lot, used Philips tubes in their TVs quite a lot, but they also resorted to Toshiba from time to time, and not a bad move because they do also produce a very good picture. The interesting thing about the Siemens brand, and this also applies to Blorpunk, I don't know how you pronounce that name, but that is another German brand that produced some televisions for a while. The Siemens and the Blorpunk are basically Grundig televisions in the fact that they use the Grundig chassis, the CUC family of chassis that they renamed it into their own naming system. Uh, I can't remember the, the ch chassis equivalency of the one here in front of us as to which um, Grundig chassis it is, but needless to say, basically looking at a Grundig TV. <clears throat> we'll go around the back and have a look there. Oh, I'm not going to really point out what's on the front in the way of connections because there's not much. There's only a headphone port. That's okay. Alrighty, there's the sticker with the details on the back. German TV, but it's actually made in Austria. Let's have a look at the inputs. Always nice to see three scarts. Now don't ask me what the colouring of the scart sockets mean. The black one here on the bottom is AV1, and that is RGB enabled. AV2 is the orange one, and that is also RGB enabled. AV3 is not RGB enabled, it only runs composite. Now, as I say, I don't know what the colouring means. I have another TV that's got a blue socket and that does have RGB in it. So I'm not really sure what, what that means and if the industry actually um, set out a standard for colouring of the sockets. I have no idea at this point in time. Up here we've got a group of composite inputs. They're not coloured but they are the standard audio left and right. And then you composite in. There's also an S video there. Now the TV calls the composite input here AV4 and the S-Video AV5. So it's, it would seem that they are separate, but they're not. If you have an appliance, a device hooked up to AV4 and AV5 at the same time and turn them on, they will interfere with each other, so they're not truly separate from one another. You've also got your audio out there. As I always say, I run all my things straight to the stereo rather than going through the TV. And I have noticed that going through this TV and then into the amp does um, induce some interference from the television. So, maybe not the best idea to use those audio outs there. Antenna, of course, and that's about here around the back. The picture quality is great. It's just a good all-around performer. I'm actually contemplating putting this TV inside the house into the games room. The TV in the games room is actually of a slightly better quality, but it's not as big, and it doesn't have an S-Video input inside. I want to hook up the 3DO with this video, so I'm going to really need to bring in to the house something like this. At the moment, I'm using a Grundig remote. I don't have the original Siemens brand. And seeing that these do use, as I say, Grundig chassis inside, you can get away from time to time using a Grundig remote. There is one fault that I've noticed. If you go into the TV's menu system, when a device uh, and it looks like if it's an NTSC device, this happens. You get the menu, but it's actually rolling or flickering. If there was a PAL device hooked in, this might not happen, but it seems to do it when you've got an NTSC device. It's not hard to get around. You can switch the device off. The menu is okay. Um, what I do like is the ability to get into the service menu. It's got the the, the gateway to it here, 
you just got to enter the right code and the code is 089 and then you're in. You can go into your geometry and adjust all those things. I've already done that. And another nice little feature, if you particularly if you're going to um, if you're into the arcade scene and you want to put a tube like this inside an arcade machine or bed, it's pretty big, probably too big for that. But when you can set it so when the TV first turns on, it'll be on AV like SCART one RGB, or you can have it on your regular RF channels, but for an arcade cabinet, that's really good because it's you're not going to need to use your remote to change your channel every time you turn the cabinet on. It's going to be into SCART 1 straight away, RGB. No problems there at all. Turn the console back on. And we're off again. Bit of an annoyance that, but no big deal. I'm not going to need to go into the menu at all. I've set all the adjustments to where I want them. So in the end, um, you know, it's a fairly rare brand of TV, but just go for your Grundigs instead. They're a bit more common. It's not a 100 hertz model. It's a good old 15 kilohertz horizontal scanning range and 50, 60 hertz vertical scanning range. Standard stuff. For the date of this one, I can only guess. I wouldn't think it would be any earlier than 94 and probably no later than 97. Well, that's all I've got to say about this one. Actually, it, it was out of order for a little while and by fluke I've got it back working again and I'm happy that I did because I was able to make a video while it's here in the shed. So thanks for watching and see you next time.